Nils, what's up, man? Hey, what's going on, Eric? Good to be here. Yeah, well, thanks for being here. So, Rock Trick Olympics, what do you think? Man, it was so much fun. If I could do it again, I absolutely wouldn't hurt you. I had an awesome time. It was a freaking lot of fun. I, you know, the whole running gun thing doesn't mix with what I do, but I really enjoyed it. <laughs> and, uh, Wait, so you're saying long range, long range precision rifle accuracy doesn't translate to running around with a pistol? Who yeah, no, they they don't mix. You know, when you're trying to get the maximum amount, amount of accuracy and running and gunning, they kind of don't mix. But it was fun. It was a lot of fun. I'll give you that. It was. And there was a lot of marksmanship involved in the rock chuck Olympics. Everything from the hidden rock chucks was a lot of like kind of throttle control stuff where you didn't really know what you were getting yourself into, but you still had to make those shots count and do it fast somehow. Uh, all the way over to like the PRS style. So it was, it was really interesting. Yeah, for sure. So I want to talk to you about the uh, hidden rock chucks. That was the very first stage that we were exposed to. And uh, I don't know. It was hidden, literally. <laughs> we had never seen it. And they made sure that we didn't talk to each other and that we didn't hear about how everybody else did. So it was literally hidden. So you went in there completely blind and once I said go, that's when you had to kind of put a plan together. What was your plan going into it? I mean, the only information you and I had going into that stage was the audible from other competitors that shot it before us. So we knew kind of how long it took them to engage each target. We had an idea of how far those targets were apart just by the break in their reports. Uh, but that's really the only information we had to go with. Everything else was completely a surprise, which is what made that stage so interesting. Yeah, I agree. All right, so let's. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, your performance, and then you can talk us through uh, what you did, what you were thinking, and all that good stuff. How about that? Sounds good. Nils, you're about to take on stage one hidden rock chucks. What are you thinking? You know, I'm. I think I'm ready for it, but at the same time, I have no idea what I'm about to expect. <laughs> um, I. <sighs> I'm not nervous, but I'm definitely excited to shoot this. We're nice. ready to get it going. Good. Do you have a strategy for this one? So if I had to say I had a strategy, it would be see what the difficulty of the targets are and then evaluate what kind of shooting position I need. So if they're relatively close range and I can get away with standing, um, that might be a good solution. If that isn't working, maybe I'll try a, a kneeling or a prone position for a little bit more stability. So it'll depend on the difficulty of the targets. But my thing will be just forcing myself to take my time, get my hits, because normally speed's more important. But in this case, accuracy is more important. Good luck, Nils. Thank you. Appreciate it. Your time starts now. So you went prone here. Why did you do that? I did. So we had probably 15 rounds earlier that day to do the sight in for our rifles. And I really wanted to double confirm my zero was where I thought it was. So that kind of took the human element out of it, and I could just fire a couple of good rounds and confirm whether or not my sights were where I thought they were. You were going quite fast here. So go ahead and pause it for a second. So an interesting thing about this thing is we don't know where the targets are, we don't know the distance of the targets, but they gave us delineating lines that we shot from and the direction the target was. So in between each shooting position, you know, if you can cut down on the time in between those shooting positions, now you have more time to not only find the targets, but also more time to, you know, put accurate shots down range. So I wanted to get accurate shots off, but also move to the next position as fast as possible. Yeah, I see. Is this very similar to what you do in pistol shooting? Uh, in some ways, the movement aspect is similar. Um, what doesn't really do its justice with the video is the, the grade of this terrain. You're actually shooting on quite a good slope and running downhill. So the oh, I wish I hadn't told you anything there. You actually got on the wrong side of those flags. You would have never found that target. Well, it's a good thing they did. Uh, 
Also, one thing I want to do is if I missed a target or if I missed a shot, to fire one of my makeup shots at that target rather than passing it up and possibly having to shoot a more difficult shot later on. I would, I tried to get the points that were available to me as I shot at them rather than, than moving on. This one? Yeah, that was very book, uh, very good strategy. Uh, some of the, as we know now, some this of the one? competitors did not do that and they really cost them a lot of time and points. Right. Because yes, the shot you're shooting might be difficult, but who's to say the next one will be even more difficult? Yeah, and you're already there, and you already found a target, so might as well engage it, right? Absolutely. And out. And since this was a time multiplier, so essentially the time you had remaining uh, was a multiplier factor for the points you got. So you, I had 17 hits, but I shot it in, you know, with two minutes and 41 seconds to spare. So those extra fractions of a point, that was, you know, would hopefully help me later on in the event. That was awesome, guys. So that's one thing that I'm obviously not. <laughs> very savvy on not very educated uh i just went really slow and i got a lot of hits uh i think 16 you had 17 but it took me almost five minutes so i had no time multiplier mm -hmm. and there was others that shot it they only got like 11 points but because of the time they actually ended up getting more points than me and i you know i just thought as long as you get your points there's no way Time is worth more than points, but it was. <laughs> it was worth a lot of points. And I think the way they had it set up was, like, if you timed out, your multiplier was one. So you had one X. And I right. want to say they did a, it was like a point one or a point, I think a point one for every additional minute you had over your allotted five minute time period. So two and a half minutes for me, I, if my math works out, it should be a 1.25 multiplier to my score. And I don't know how close down to the decimal that they went, but, you know, a couple of, you know, points or fractions of points can make a difference. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a big thing. And again, I, I still don't regret what I did, uh, you know, going for the hits. I, I did skip one target. I saw it and I thought, well, that's kind of far. I'm, nothing else has been that far. And I just decided to pass it up. And right after I passed it up, I realized, oh, crap, it may, this may be an indicator that they're just getting tougher and tougher. And it ended up costing me like three points because when I got to the end, I had one shot to go. And that target was really far. And it took me forever to find it. So I ate up about a minute and a half finding right. that one target. And then I shot at it and I missed because it was so far. So. Anyway, did we ever hindsight. end up ranging that target to see exactly how far it was? Because obviously we didn't have glass, you know, in the moment. No, no, I have no idea. But it was far. <laughs> I know because I went prone. I aimed right at it, and I missed low. So it had I to don't be know. far. You, you're not that good. Maybe you just pulled the shot. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel. I feel like talking with Peter. Uh, the target was over 200 yards um, by the the hold that he made on that target and make, and got an impact. So I think it was over 200, which is way farther than probably both of us would have thought it was. Yeah, for sure. But anyway, it was fun, fun stage. I, uh, again, I, at that point, nobody really fell behind. It was still pretty clustered up, but of course the next stage is the pistol stage, which my favorite, gonna cover, my specialty. which we're going to cover next, but Man, uh, anything else you want to add? Hindsight, would you have done anything different? You know, I think I probably would have done it the same way again. Um, obviously, having shot the course once, I would have been quite a bit faster because I wouldn't be hunting for the targets on the, the right side initially. Um, I feel like I executed quite well and took my time when I needed to to get those hits on target. So I'm happy with how I shot. Well, good, man. You did well. Good job. Thanks, I'll, uh, on to the pistol stage that's on the next episode <laughs> all right catch you guys later keep them centered